and Vince Taylor, his work this camp? Since the day I got in this building, Vince has done nothing but work. He comes in, puts his head down, and just comes to work with a good attitude, and it's showing on it with his play right now. He uh, takes his craft very serious, takes his work ethic very serious, takes being a teammate very serious, and he's making strides. Um, not where we want to be yet, but he's heading in the right direction. Obviously, obviously, William Hayes suffered an injury today, but what do you envision for his role with this team? You know, um, in Will's history, you know, he has a history of playing left defensive end and then moving inside on passing downs, rushing the passer from in there. That's what we've been primarily working with him. You know, first and second down, he's a great edge setter, physical presence on the edge. And then once you move him in, inside, uh, you can create some mismatch, mismatches on guards, let him use his speed, let him work his hands, and uh, get him in there rushing. Wait, wait, does he need to practice that defensive tackle spot, or do you? Or you, you oh yeah, it? oh yeah. You got to sharpen your sharpen your blade every day, sharpen your axe every day. He's gotten a lot of reps that in there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, throughout since we've been back. Okay. Uh, individual work, teamwork, something he's done in his past. But it, you know, we're not gonna put a player in a position that he's never practiced. So yeah, he's gonna get some work in there and one on one pass rush against the O line. He's gonna get work in there. And uh, Will's done a, a really good job. Tough guy, team guy. Um, Everything we ask him to do, he does. I know he's a, he's a lunch pail type guy, and I know he's reiterated, reiterated to y'all that whatever the team needs, he'll do, and that's kind of the attitude he brings every day. Chris, when you watch Charles Harris, what did you identify as things you wanted him to work on, and how has he done with those things? I wanted Charles, I wanted to try to simplify things for Charles and get him playing to a skill set as fast as he can go. Um, as a rookie, you come in and you get all this stuff thrown on you, scheme, technique, repetition, first time in a new environment, and sometimes it can just overflow your mind, and then all of a sudden you're playing hesitant. I just want Charles to play as fast as he can, because if he does, good things are gonna happen for him. When you watched him on film last year, when he just pinned his ears back and went as fast as he could, that's when good things happened for him. When things got in his head and, and he played a little hesitant, that's when he wasn't so good. So we just want Charles to play fast, as fast as he can possibly go. When he does that, good things happen for him. Can any of the rookies one? catch your eye so far? Oh, we're just rolling them all in there at this point in time. You know, we got uh, two defensive tackles and two young ends, and it's, uh, it's showing up grinding every day. So we'll, you get a uh, better feeling for those guys once you see them in preseason action, get them in a game situation, see how they react under pressure, and uh, once we put them in some situations, you know, in a game and see how they progress. Coach, Cam Wake says that he doesn't think your voice is going to make it through the training camp, man. What, what, what are the odds on that? <laughs> Usually once I make it through the third day, get some hot tea and some coffee down my throat, get to the player's day off and rest it for a day, then I'm usually good for a stretch. Tell then, me about how much, how much you, you gotta love being out. I mean, the way, the way you coach, I mean, you gotta love it, right? I mean, that's, that's always been your makeup. I'll, I'll just say this, I have a passion for D-line play. I was a D-lineman, I've always put my hand in the ground and I got a passion for coaching those guys and getting the most out of those guys. From a physicality standpoint, from an effort standpoint, from a mentality standpoint, it's, you know, in my mind, there's nothing more beautiful to see a D-line all come together and working as one, you know, because everybody's seen across the NFL, you know, you can have parts to a D-line, one guy playing really good, but our goal here is to have a unit that plays well. From top to bottom, we feel good about sticking anybody in the game, any given point in time, and they're gonna go in there and get the job done. Chris, what has this uh, transition been like for you? Different, you know, because I was settled in a, in a spot for nine years and uh, had the same office for nine years, same meeting room for nine years, same layout for nine years, same track to work for nine years, and then all of a sudden you get thrown into a little bit different environment, but it's been great. The building's great. Um, I've loved it every day I've came in here. I look forward to cranking my truck in the morning and getting to work as fast as I can. You, uh, you played in the NFL. You know how tough this game is. Does, does that help you as a coach? Oh, yeah. I mean... As coaching D-line, I think you need to have some type of put your hand in the ground background in your history, you know, or, you know, be known as a guy that brings it at some other position. But, um, you know, this is a physical game played with physical men. And we got to uh, get in good work versus our offensive line. Iron sharpens iron, working each other every single day, just trying to get a little bit better. You know, there's no winning and losing right now. We'll keep score once they put the ball down and we get a team in another color jersey, then we'll start keeping score. In addition to William Hayes, is there another defensive end or two who have a body type and, uh, and style of play conducive to moving inside of Adrian? Well, there's a couple guys on the roster, you know. You look at a guy like uh, Malvo, you know, bigger, taller, 
linear guy that can you know move down in there. I, in my past, uh, Detroit, we had a guy named Jason Jones who has a very, very similar body type as uh, Malvo. You know, another guy's uh, Woodard. You know, big, tall, linear guy. You know, a heavier defensive end that can go inside there and rush. Quinn, what's what's impressed you three months seeing him on the field now? Uh, just just months. everything that's impressed me throughout his career. Um, he's a pass rusher. He's, he makes his he butters his bread rushing the passer, and he's really good at it. Trying to get him back in his comfort zone, and just playing that right DM position, playing as fast as he can go, and uh, hopefully when it comes down to it, I just don't mess him up. Always doing, doing well, showing up with a great attitude, practicing hard, uh, consistency start, starting to come. He's done well. Had a really good day today. He was disruptive in the backfield, especially in some of our short yardage situations. You really saw him show up. Please, with Jordan. Just be consistent. Just me show up and be consistent with him, him show up and be consistent with, with himself, and just, just stack one day on top of the other. Just stack one block each day, and let's see what the end result's going to be. With, with, I know you talked about Vincent Taylor earlier. Uh, we see him like shed blocks and make tackles for loss every now and then. What does he do well? Why, why is he able to make such a play? He, he is extremely strong. His upper body strength is, is, I mean, he can just, he can grab guys and sometimes he might not even be in the best situation and he can just pry a guy and get off a guy with upper body strength. And now that, now you're starting to see some of our attack come along with his strength. So that's, you know, that's some of the steps you're seeing Vince take right now. Uh, he's really taking to the attack scheme that we're, we're wanting to unlock our hips and get into blockers and try to knock blockers back and not just try to use it all with your upper body. And Vince is taking to that now. When you knock a guy back with his pads, it's easier to get off of him and shed him, and that's what you're starting to see with him.